Hello and welcome to lab. Today we're going to do the rate law of a chemical reaction. I'd like you to be my lab partner and I'd like you to follow along in your lab manual. The first thing we needed to do is to fill our burettes with the four solutions. Potassium iodide, potassium chloride, potassium persulfate, and sodium sulfate. I've normalized those burettes already and filled them. And I have also obtained sodium thiosulfate in a beaker. And I've normalized my pipette with that. What we're going to do is measure the time of reaction. And we'll be able to see that because in this beaker we'll get a, uh, it ranges from a, a brownish blue to a dark blue solution from clear to a colored solution and we're going to be measuring the time. From that we can get a rate and from the concentrations we've given all the uh, data that you need to develop the concentrations we can calculate the rate law and the orders with respect to the reactants. In solution one and we've drained these already. There's a table in your lab manual. Uh, we've drained them to two Erlenmeyer flasks. And I've already pipetted 10.0 milliliters of the sodium thiosulfate to the beaker. I'm going to add some starch. That is going to be our indicator. Um, this is kind of a neat bottle. There's a protrusion in the neck. If you line that up with the protrusion in the cap, and put your finger over the top. You can dispense drops of liquid, liquid without having to take off the cap. So I've done that. And the next thing I'll do is I'll pour these in at the same time and we'll measure the time to a color. All right, are you ready with your timer? Again, sometimes it's helpful to put a piece of white paper underneath to see the color change. And there's a color change right there. OK. And please give me the seconds for that. 41 seconds. 41 seconds. OK, great. That is what you can record for solution one. For solution two, we've already drained our solutions that we needed to our flasks A and B and I put 10 milliliters of the sodium thiosulfate and then I just put starch in my beaker. Okay, get ready to time. Now, since we changed our concentrations, I'm going to expect a different time for the reaction.
time. 92 seconds. For solution 3, I've already pipetted 10 milliliters of the sodium thiosulfate into our reaction beaker. And I've just added the starch. Okay, get ready to time. Time. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. For solution four, I've already added the 10 milliliters of sodium thiosulfate. And then I've just added the starch, give it a little mix. All right, get ready to time. Time, 82 seconds. 82 seconds. Now to solution five, I've added my 10 milliliters of my sodium thiosulfate. And I'll add some starch. Give it a swirl and get ready to time. Time, 
56 seconds for this one. Solution five. We're done with the experiment now. You can complete the data sheet and the error analysis on the back of the data sheet. We'll need to clean up our burettes. We'll need to drain these. All of these can go to waste down the drain. Rinse them with DI water, flip, and leave the stopcock open, signaling a clean burette. You can pour the remaining solutions down the drain also and put the beaker matched with the burette that it's supposed to go with. Put the remainder of your equipment in the middle for the next people. One more thing before we leave this experiment is every rate of reaction experiment has a temperature associated with it. Often we don't use this in our calculations. There are some which we can use that temperature in, but you need to always state a temperature when you are doing a rate of reaction experiment because the rate is dependent upon temperature. I'd like you to read the temperature now. Thank you for being my lab partner. In the data table for this experiment, first enter the units for each column. The first four columns are concentrations, and the units here are molarity, symbolized by a capital M. The change in time is seconds, and the rate is molar per second. The units of K will be determined later in the calculations. Let's calculate the concentrations of all species in run 1. Using the dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2, and the concentrations and volumes in table 12.2, the concentration of the iodide ion in a total solution volume of 50.0 milliliters can be calculated. The concentrations of the persulfate ion and the thiosulfate ion are also calculated using the dilution formula and the values in table 12.2. To calculate the change in iodine concentration, the two chemical equations for this experiment show that the change in iodine concentration is equal to half of the thiosulfate ion concentration. The remaining concentrations for runs 2 through 5 can be calculated in a similar manner. Using the reaction time data obtained in the experiment, a rate for each run can be calculated. From this data, the orders with respect to the iodide ion and the persulfate ion can be determined. The overall order of the reaction is calculated by adding these two orders. Next, calculate a K for each run and then average them to determine the average K. From this, the overall rate law expression for this reaction can be written. Remember, all rate of reaction experiments have a temperature associated with them. So be sure to read and record the temperature of this reaction. Also be sure to include it when reporting any data.